What's going on guys and gals? Mopar Man here, 1978. Um, out here on a day off. Halfway decent day, wind's blowing. A little cold, but I mean, you're not gonna get much better than that during January, you know. So, uh, put on a few layers, but uh, today I'm gonna be working on taking out the uh, heater core and heater box, because it needs to be taken out. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, uh, it's been sitting, this car has been sitting for so long, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a rat's nest inside the heater box. And for those that don't know, if you don't bother to check that stuff randomly once in a while, even in your new vehicles, you could have a mouse or a rat or something get up in there and build a nest in there, and before you know it, you've got a fire in your vehicle, and your, your whole vehicle could burn down if you're not careful. Uh, because of that little wound up coil that heats up that uh, it's kind of like a resistor or whatever um, Trans or yeah, it's something in there that it uh, basically deals with the uh, The fan the, the voltage to the fan and whatnot um, So uh, And the, the scent that the temperatures and all that stuff, but anyway um, if, you, if it's all clogged up in there it could start a tinder box basically and start the car on fire so you don't want that so i'm gonna be doing that it need to be done anyway and then we'll be i might i don't know if i'm gonna make all this in one video or two separate videos probably maybe two separate videos would probably be a lot easier um the second one would be taking the wipers off getting under the dash that's another reason why i want to take the uh heater box out i have more access to underneath the dash and then finally get these uh, pivot shaft or wiper pivot shaft housing assemblies or whatever you want to call them uh, taken out I've got I went and bought two kits from uh, year one for the dart and for the valiant uh, it comes with the grease certs to put on the uh, pivot shaft or wiper shaft assembly, housing assemblies so anyway um, it's all new seals all that stuff and then what I like to do is I don't use regular lithium grease, the white grease. After a while, after so many years, the heat and cold, heat and cold, it starts to deteriorate and, and turn crusty or somewhat gelatinous. And anyway, um, I use, I have two grease guns. I have one for to grease the regular ball joints, stuff like that. And then I have a separate one specifically for a product called Super Lube. It uh, comes in that regular size uh, caulking gun tube, but it has, uh, looks like aluminum foil type coating over the outside, it says Super Lube. And it's 100% uh, pure uh, silicone grease. You can use it for automotive applications or you can use it around stuff that requires to be around food or water supply or something like that so it won't contain it won't contaminate uh stuff that you're consuming um but anyway i use the, i'm going to be using that because i grease if uh the polyurethane bushings i have on some like on my truck and whatnot they have grease certs and that's what i use i use that grease that uh, silicone grease um comes out real thick anyway um, keep stuff from rusting and squeaking and whatnot. Well, I'm gonna once I get the greaser drill the hole and put the greasers on those uh, pivot housings for the wiper blades um, or the wipers, I should say. Um, I'm gonna be putting that, gr that grease in there, and that's another way to help keep water from getting down through that housing and rusting those shafts up and seizing them up, that sort of thing. And uh, so, anyway. Uh, but I guess today we'll focus on getting the uh, fan, the heater core, and the heater box out of the car. So here. So basically, start off right here. There's a Phillips head. Let's see if we can get in there. Probably casting a shadow over everything. I really can't see. There's a glare coming off my uh, cell phone. Luckily, let's see if we can get a better shot there. 
Yes, no, maybe. Anyway, you, you guys can probably see it. I can't. Anyway, get that taken care of and out of the way. And that releases the, uh, that rod, that flat plate that goes between the two uh, ports on the uh, heater core. All right, we're back inside the car. As you can see, I got most of the car recleaned up. It was starting to look like a pigsty in here. But uh, anyway, one of the things you'll want to do is uh, the the hoses were deteriorating, so I took those off. Um, the uh, I want to be real careful because this is the original factory glove box paper there's that that's all out of the way and then you got to get up in here disconnect them two wires and then you take that little uh, lock washer off the top of that let's see here there we go off of that little pivot shaft right there and let's see I'll point to it This, this right there that pops off and uh, then you'll need to take this off as well and then down under here you got a, you got another one right there so stay tuned and then you also got these little clips that go on these here. Best way I found to take them off is once they're on there, like uh, I'll just do it. Um, anyway, this is how it would go on there. Uh, just take a pair of a straight a straight edge screwdriver, come in here, and. Uh, Basically, get in that lip, and you, you won't want to use a long one like this, but anyway. Um, slide in that little lip on the clip, and then pry this way and down, and it'll pop right off. That way you don't uh, damage this lip where it helps lock it into place on this uh, fiberglass housing box slash heater box. Anyway, be right back. Um, by the way, once you get the little Phillips head short little screw off the top of this, come in here under this lip right here and pry out towards you and up and this will come right off because there's a locking tab right there that comes on the end of that. And down underneath here, under the heater box, there is a screw right here that you have to loosen up and take out and I'm just using what is the size is this this is a it's so faded I can't see what it says it's a I believe it's a 5 16th I think the other ends a five yeah three eighths but, uh, but anyway Okay, so got the uh, two wire connectors disconnected from the heater box. Got the little clip off the top lock, lock, lock washer, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the proper term for it. Got that off of there. Got that clip off of there. Let's see if I can get back up in here. There we go. Uh, got the clip back off of here that requires the little, that short little Phillips screw and the clip itself, that long rectangular lock-in clip, which is basically one of these. The biggest challenge was clear back in here to this pivot right here with another one of them little lock washers on it. Um, I had to uh, basically use... 
they might make a special tool but I just had to get in here and snake it up there and then slowly work its way up and pop it off the uh, pivot shaft there and uh, so now looks like everything is disconnected so far as far as we're um, except for the uh, blower motor okay these bolts here on the blower motor housing is uh, 7 16 let me get a uh, ratchet here Also, when you take this blower motor out, make sure you inspect it, um, rotate it, make sure it's not got a hang up, maybe a bearing starting to go bad in it from it sitting so long. Um, it's probably a good idea just to replace it, but if I remember correctly when I had to do this on the dart, I think this this uh there's a rod uh, a long threaded rod on right here that goes to the front of the uh, blower motor and you can take those two uh, nuts off and then get in there and uh, resurface this blower motor you can check the contacts and the bearings and see if you need, it needs to be re-greased or cleaned up in there we might do that see how and then uh, test it he's been on here for a while but anyway when I come back I'll have this off okay been on here for a while so it's gonna take a little there we go plate still good the foam seal looks almost brand new inside. Nothing's deteriorating, falling apart. So is that rubber factory seal still in good condition, surprisingly? It's not deteriorating. Okay, now, as you can see, there's a plate that went there on the firewall. And as I started start tapping, it, you can see the, that the uh, heater core and the blower motor and all that stuff is uh, pulling away from the firewall inside. So, okay, last but not least, down over here on the kick where the kick panel goes, you got this screw right here. This is your ground wire screw. You want to make sure that take that off. Put this back in so you don't lose that screw. And then also, here is what's left of the insulation ring, the uh, gasket, so to speak, that goes between the, uh, let's see, the heater box and the uh, bottom of the, the crawl panel, or whatever you want, the underside of the, uh, the dash. Um, I'll show you in part two on a low budget way to replace the seal with some stuff you can buy at the uh, home improvement store and then uh, we also are going to upgrade from this uh, insulation that they had glued to the side of the box and up here on the wall or the, behind the kick panel. I got some other uh, more modern insulation to use. It's better. It's not that fiberglass stuff. Um, and it does just as good as not better. Okay, here's the box. The heater core, I should say. Box. Heater box. Anyway. Uh, here's that hook. And then down there is where that, I was telling you about that bolt that you got to loosen up. Well, what you do is when you get all this situated and ready for a reinstallation, you got to make sure this hook, this 
section here, besides getting everything lined up on the firewall and pushed in, this, uh, let's set this heater box out here. Okay. Let me get under here. As you can see, there's where the blower motor goes. Heater, or uh, yeah, heater core tubes. Here's the underside of the uh, crawl panel, kick panel, whatever you want, or not kick panel, but uh, dash, whatever you want to call it. Um, and here's where the uh, fresh air comes in. And you can see the fiberglass here. We'll be getting rid of that. Anyway, because that's in the way. And I think I found... Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's not wet. Never mind. I'll have to clean this up. Make sure this lip here... Get this all wire brushed and cleaned up. We need some scotch Bright pad and get it all cleaned up. Spray it with some rust killer. And then I'll come back in with that uh, tube of uh, caulking made by uh, Gorilla Glue Company. That's uh, I bought over in the uh, wall covering section of uh, Menards uh, where I work. Uh, it's 100% uh, high grade clear silicone. It's guaranteed not to yellow, flake, peel, whatever. It's uh, very high temp resistant, very cold temp resistant. Uh, we'll be sealing all that up in there. But anyway, the heater box is out, as you can see. Now I got more access to getting up in here and getting the... Uh, wiper arm pivot shaft housing out on this side and, and the driver's side and disconnecting all this from the, uh, the actual uh, box itself the, the wiper motor anyway and uh, I'll have to see if uh, I'll close the hood here I'll, I'll, I'll check to see after I get the uh, new seals and everything in on the wiper blade before I put the heater core back in to see if I have any water leaks coming in from anywhere else because I plan on putting some new uh, uh, jute sound deadening uh, carpet padding down on the floor that has that uh, laminated a uh, plastic laminated aluminum backing on it uh, for uh, to deflect heat and stuff like that I'm going to be gluing that down to the floor and once I get all that before I get all that done, I want to make sure I got no leaks coming in anywhere from under the dash or on the kick panels, uh, behind the kick panels or anything like that. So stay tuned. Part two will show after the box, or I might do part three, uh, cleaning the box out, disassembling it, cleaning it, uh, prepping it, painting it, getting it all prepped and ready to be put back in. And then part three will be uh, reinstalling it and all that stuff. So anyway, stay tuned for more videos. Till then.